Hey everyone, welcome to the next part of the crafting series. Let's straight jump into the preview. As you can see here, we added the crafting items to our crafting widget. And we have a simple hover effect here in place. Also, when I change the current level to 3, we can see more unlocked items in our crafting widget. And that's it. Let's start. Open up your WB crafting menu. And inside here, we want to create now our content for the items. Close the horizontal box and then search for the vertical box. This one. And drag and drop it here. And let's move the anchors to the left. And then let's see, we want to have the position 100. And the offset top, we want to have 200. And then let's see the size X. Let's take something like 800 or 600. And then the offset bottom, we want to have like the top with 200. Something like this. For the design, I use two borders like this. The first border will be the background color uh, of my separation line. So you will see this in a second. I will tint this in a gray tone like this. And then I will pick another border over this one. And this border will get a padding only on top or two. And then it will get a color, something like, sorry, not the content color, but the tint. Some blue color can pick it from the background, something from here at the bottom left, something like this. Now you will see we have this separation line here in between. So this first border will be our text where we write down which category we are in. So click this text block and then Click or type in some default text like Amor, for example. Now let's move this a little bit into the center, like this. And then we want this one to be the border on auto, so we don't have the full uh, box filled with the small item category. I always like to change this to the light and also give it a more left heading. So something like 15, like this. And if we are here already, let's add top and bottom padding to five. Something like this, much better. And the next step, let's do the same container here for the bottom where we put in the content. So copy the two borders and paste them into the vertical box like this. And here we want to delete the text. And this second border here will be our fill border. Now you can see the effect while we duplicate both. We now have a separation line between the content and the text. And if you like, you can also add here at the bottom. For that, click on your inner border. And then let's add a padding to the bottom too. Like this. And now we have also a separation line on the bottom. And next up in this content border, we want to have a vertical box. Like this. Want to remove all the padding of it. And then we want to have a scroll box like this. And inside that, we want a wrap box like this. Now let's make sure that our wrap box is not variable and we call it WB underscore crafting items container or something like this. And you can also click on the text block and 
call it TB underscore crafting item category. And make sure it's in variable. Before we test, maybe we want to use here the same color as the buttons. So for that, go in here again and hover over the item with the small pipette. And do the same for the content border. Click on this one and then go all the way to the icons. And now if we test it, it looks much better. Next up, we can work on the logic. Go to the graph. And here from the event construct, we want to cast to BP character. Could also do this with an interface, but I like to keep it simple. And we will get the player controller. And from this one, we will get the controlled pawn. So we always get the one that the player of the game is currently controlling. Put it in here and then Promote this to a variable and we call this player ref. On the left, we have here a lot of variables from the um, designer. So I like to put them in a designer tab like this. You can see now it's in designer category and we can now drag and drop them into there. Like this. The next step now would be to create a custom event. This one will be update all crafting slots. So we call this as our initialize event. And we want to have an input which will be the data table to use. Again, this is necessary for later tutorial. Search here for data table, this one, and call the object reference. Then we want to promote this to a variable like this. Next up, let's rearrange this in a straight line. And then we want to have here another variable that comes in, and this will be our craftable items name. Like this, and this will be our name array then let's create a function which will be start slot creation so we call this all the time we want to have the slots created plug this in and as an input we take the craftable items name like this inside the start slot creation we want to rename this one to craftable items. And then here we want promote it to a local variable. So it's only in the scope of this function. Craftable items like this. And because it has the same name, you can't name it like this. So let's call it L craftable items for local craftable items. Then from that one, we want to get in for each loop like this. And we want to save this also into a local variable. And this will be our current row. Then we'll pull in the data table to use. And we want to check if the data table row exists. So connect those like this. And if it exists, we want to create a slot widget. You guessed it right. Another function create lot widget plug this in here and then we want to get the current row into that and for that we just get an input and this will be our row but not an array it will be a single like this go into the create slot widget and inside here we want to get the data table to use. And from that one, we want to get data table row. Like this. And now you can just plug it in or you can search for get row. This will get the exact same item. Like this. 
And then we want to create the local variable current crafting row from type craftable item. Then set this one and plug it in. From the current crafting row, we want to create a widget. This one here. And now let's create this widget. Go into your crafting folder and inside here, we want to have a widget blueprint, user widget, wb underscore crafting lot. Something like this. Open this up. And then here we want first have a size box so we can change the outcome. And then let's set this one to custom. And I will take something like 125, 125, and make sure to also do this on the size box. At the top, we want to have a button. So plug this in like this. Let's start the button first, click on the style and then on normal. And inside here we want to have a black color and then we want to have the opacity on 0.3 or something like this. And then we can see here we already have this corner radius. And now let's add also a small padding to all sides. Like this. If you want to increase the width of the border, you can just type in here too like this. For the hovered and pressed, I like to copy the normal and just paste them into the hovered and pressed. And then I open the hovered and I increase this one a little bit, 2.5 for example. And here at the pressed, we can increase this to 0.6. Then let's add an horizontal box to the button. And to this horizontal box, we will add an overlay. Make sure it's set to fill and the same goes for the horizontal box like this. Remove the headings. Go to the button and inside here we have this normal padding. We want to remove this one. So now the horizontal box stretch around all the button. On the overlay, we want to have an image, which will be our item image. This one, let's put it into the middle. And then we want to have an red box, like this. Make sure to align it to the bottom, so this will be our text. And inside here, we want to have a border so we can always read the text. And then inside this border, we want to have a text. First, let's change the text to something like weapon one, for example. And of course the border color to a black one with a bit of opacity. And maybe you can also add some blue tone to it, something like this. Then we can change the size here to 12, for example. And then on the border, we want to center align it. And the red box will be stretched. And on the border, let's check everything. Why is this not in the middle? We need to center the content horizontally, like this. On the text, I forgot to set the justification into center. And then we also want to auto wrap the text if it's too long. We can test this by adding some more words here or armor, for example. I can see it stretches to the top and will never go outside here. The next step would be to add a small button padding, something like five, so it's not going over the bottom border. 
that's it for now. Go back to the crafting menu and inside here we search for the WB crafting slot. And in the next step, we want to have now our WB crafting items container and we want to add a child to it. You just have to plug it in like this. And the last step would be going back to the AC crafting and looking for the input action where we open the inventory. And here we want to call the WB crafting ref and from that update all crafting slots like this. And we take the unlocked craftable items, we put them in. And the data table to use will be the craftable player items. Like this. Check the current level, set it to 1 again. And then we can test if we have two items here. And as you can see, we have two item slots with the cool hover effect. And when I put this to 3 again, we will see now that we have one more unlocked. And that's it for this video. In the next one, we will add filtering and also add the correct item data in here. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye.